G'day guys and girls. Today we're talking about the seven most important steps in how to shoot a panoramic. So stick around. Good morning, you beautiful people. That is right. Today we are doing seven steps on how to shoot a panoramic. On this channel, we like to do plenty of tips, tricks, and reviews, but mainly we love to implement them out in this beautiful world doing landscape photography. So if that sort of stuff interests you, please make sure to drop below and subscribe for future content. But today we have come to the beautiful Lake Bled. I was thinking to myself two weeks ago, I live in one of the most beautiful natural countries in the world for landscape and landscape photography, but I hardly ever bring you guys to the most beautiful spots. I ride my bike, run, walk around Lake Bled all the bloody time, but I hardly ever come here to photograph. So that is my job over the next sort of three to four months to bring you to the most beautiful locations here in Slovenia, because you should come. You should join one of my workshops to come and photograph this beautiful place. The landscape, the nature, the culture, the food, the diversity it is beautiful here in Slovenia. I travel all around the world to show you other countries, but I don't show Slovenia's beauty enough. That is what we're doing today. Seven steps about how to shoot a panoramic here in Lake Bled. I'm gonna say it's not one of the most beautiful places in Lake Bled to photograph, but I'm pretty sure anywhere around the lake is absolutely beautiful. So right now we're gonna jump into step one of how to shoot a panoramic. Okay, so this little bad boy is step number one. It is leveling your tripod. I've done a vlog about this last week, which you can jump up here and watch, but I'm not really sure the message got through clear enough, and maybe that is my fault, so I'm sorry about that. But it's leveling your tripod, a leveling base in your tripod. Why would you want to level your tripod? It is super important. This is not leveling your camera. That is completely different. Leveling your tripod, it's basically where I am standing right now, I'm on a very, very uneven surface. So by having the uneven surface, I can put my tripod down and then just fix my leveling base to level everything up from tripod up. That means when we put the ball head on and turn the ball head, everything is level. So that is what the ball head is doing. Not leveling the camera, it's leveling the tripod base. So from tripod base up, everything is now level when we do that pan. But secondly, leveling the little camera. So this is a different part. We've leveled the tripod, now we wanna level the camera. So on top, with the Arca Swiss plate, we can level from there. I've got two uh, spirit levels there that can, can be leveled. So we now level that. Okay, so we've got the base of the tripod level and also the Arca Swiss plate level. So basically, why would we level everything? It is so important. Now there's things like focusing that you can't fix in post-production, but everything I'll talk about later as far as white balance and shutter speed locking down, all this sort of stuff, we can sort of tweak that in post-production to make things work. We don't want to do that, but we can make it work. But if you don't level things now, Holy moly, you might have a lot of trouble in post-production, which we do not want. So we're having a level tripod and a level uh, Arcuspice plate. We now go all the way across the horizon line. So from left to right, it's gonna be level. But if we didn't level one of those, say we level the tripod but didn't level the Arcuspice plate, it might go down or up on the right-hand side. So from shooting left to right, only the middle image will be in level or in line with the horizon. That's why it's super important to level your tripod because we want to get as close as level as possible. So when we stitch it together, we've got less play in the top and bottom trying to make that perspective happen. So that is step one, moving on to step three.
Step number three, please do not even think about reaching for filters out of your camera bag. So in step one, two, and three, we haven't even thought about composition, camera settings, anything to do with the camera so far. But why no filters? As Soon as you introduce things like polarizers, ND, half grads, all this sort of stuff, you're going to get vignetting out of it. I don't care what anyone says about how good their glass is, they're chucking on front of their lens, it still introduces vignetting. When you're shooting it out of camera, you don't notice it. It's when you get into post-production, you're gonna think, why, why the hell did I chuck on that ND to try and reduce? Shoot, shoot bracket exposure, blend them together, then blend the panos together in post-production. Trust me, do not reach for any polarizers to pop those blues out in the sky. Whatever it is, it's just gonna ruin everything in post-production. No filters, level tripod, level camera. Moving on to stage four. So this is how we end up. Shades of blue and gray. I feel just like an empty bottle. My dreams are on delay. I just wanna climb on top of a hill and throw it all away. Away. So we now have a bare naked front lens, tripod is level and ball head is level. It is time to dive into the juicy stuff and get the composition and camera setup sorted. XT3 16 to 55 from Fujifilm. Now we're going to chuck it on top of the tripod like we always do in every single one of our images. But before we even look into composition and what we're going to do with our image right now, we're going to move from left to right with the camera and make sure the level on the camera stays green. Therefore, we know when we zoom in, when we zoom out, the camera from left to right, right to left is going to stay level all the time. Second tip, we're gonna focus on the main focal point. So for me, it is the church on Bled Island. And we're gonna do the next steps of our adjustment, just focusing on this particular image. There's a reason behind that, there's a power tip coming at the end of the vlog for this particular image, but also this is the main focal point of the image. So we want this to be the correct color, the correct shutter speed, the correct brightness, all that sort of stuff coming up. But now it's time to lock down white balance. So the church, I'm very lucky, has white on it. So I'm gonna go through and lock down a Kelvin temperature. It's 6,700 right now to get the correct color of white in this image. So that's is very, very important. Do not chuck your camera on auto because if you go from left and it's say very green to right and it's a lot more red, you're gonna get a lot of color imbalance in post-production that is a very frustrating thing to fix. So lock down your Kelvin temperature. Right, you can finally see when shooting a paramic, a lot more goes into it than just chucking the camera on a tripod and go on bang, bang, bang. But this is very important to fully understand and take these steps. I take these steps every single bloody time I set my camera up. Most importantly, it takes me a very long time to level my tripod and get everything in play there because that, to me, is the most frustrating thing to fix in post-production if you can even fix it. But now it's time to get into the nitty gritty stuff in camera settings. So we've got white balance locked down. It is now time to lock everything else down in camera. Now when I shoot my landscape photography, I always try and shoot it out of native ISO. So right now, 160 locked in, and I always lock in my aperture in every landscape image I do between F9 and F11. So F9 today to shoot this panoramic. But now we really, really wanna focus on locking down the other things. And this is the last steps that we wanna take in the images. So we wanna lock down ISO and aperture as I've already said, but shutter speed is very important to lock down. 
and we're maintaining the single exposure image that I talked about when we locked down the white balance. We want to focus on this because white balance is correct already in camera, but we want to lock down our shutter speed, not set it to automatic. So say one over 25 on the church itself. To the left-hand side, it's always going to be brighter because the sun is rising to the left-hand side. To the right-hand side, we've got some clouds and a mountain, so it's gonna be darker. If we set it to automatic and leave it up to the camera, if we went from left to middle to right, I'm doing a five stitch pano, so it would change five times over the whole image. It would be the same exposure all the way around. We don't want that, it's bright on the left, darker on the right, exposing correctly in the middle of the image. That's how we want it to play in post-production because that is how it's happening in real life. So now I'm gonna wait around, get the lights correct. I wait till the lights correct, sorry. I took some images this morning where the lights were on around the island itself and also to the left-hand side. Hopefully blend them in in a later image, getting that day to night image. But I'm slowly starting to see some beautiful red colors in the clouds right now. But now I'm gonna wait around and capture some images when the light is correct. Okay, so we've got some images in camera that I'm happy with. I just wish, I feel like, Every photographer says that. I just wish we had Karma Lake this morning. Just a little bit of wind this morning, brought on some ripple, and it doesn't give that perfect mirror effect. But best thing is, I live five minutes away, I can be back. So now I'm gonna show you this image, and after this, I'm gonna give you two power tips on when shooting a panoramic. So here is this beautiful five-stitch pano of Lake Bled on a very early summer's morning. Enjoy. So there is the image guys, and how lucky am I to live in Slovenia? I'm flicking a switch in my brain and appreciating this country so much more now. I wanna photograph these beautiful places and bring you guys on this epic adventure of my life in Slovenia and encourage you guys to come to this beautiful place. But two power tips I wanna leave with you when shooting a panoramic. So if you shoot a three, five, seven stitch pano, whatever it is, Inside one of those images, make sure to shoot a vertical composition that you can use. Therefore, two images in one session. So you get the vertical image that you wanna shoot and also the panoramic. So there is one power tip. The second power tip that I cannot stress enough is overshoot. Overshoot your panoramic. So if you want, say on the left-hand side, a house there, which I've got here, and on the right-hand side, the edge of the mountain coming down. Do not shoot right just to the end of that. Make sure on the last image or the first image, whatever it is, that the middle bit, so in this case, the cliff of the mountain is in the middle part of the composition. Therefore, when you stitch it in post-production, you've got a lot of play because remember, this is five images in one. It's not just a single composition. So when you crop it, you've still got so much information. It's still gonna be a huge image to play with. So that is my second power tip that I cannot stress enough. Don't go home and realize that you've ruined your composition in camera because you didn't shoot enough. So overshoot. Don't like overshoot crazy enough because then it's gonna stuff the stitch up, but just make sure the first and last one you shoot in the middle of the composition, you got enough to play with. But guys, that is me done from the beautiful Slovenia and Lake Bled today. Two things, if you love this content, please like, subscribe and share. Secondly, if you wanna join one of my workshops, the links are in the description to photograph this beautiful place. Let me know in the comments below, are you shooting more panoramics? If not, you should. Panoramics are so freaking cool. They look amazing on the wall and they're great to sell. But guys, that is me done from beautiful Slovenia today. Ciao. Good morning, you beautiful people. That is right, seven, ste seven steps.